Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes. In the last part, we made it to the communication tower after Otacon asked an incredibly obvious question. Oh, wait, no, not, not an incredibly obvious question. A, a question with obvious undertones. In this part, we're gonna die. A lot. Well, I'm gonna die a lot. Well, no, specifically, Snake's gonna die a lot, because this is the hardest boss in the entire game. Well, at least by my recollection. Um, later on, Vulcan Raven is a difficult boss. However, he... He can be managed. It just takes a really long time. So, the snakes finally come out of his hole. Are you ready now, my brother? Why are you calling me brother? Who the hell are you? He's a huge Hulkamania. I'm you. I'm your shadow. What? Ask the father that you killed! I'll send you to hell to meet him! Intense! Now it's time for the fighting and the failure and the sadness that comes along with it. I forgot about his patterns. I'm probably gonna get killed, aren't I? Uh. Fuck! Uh, now this is the problem that I don't want to waste uh, my body armor. You think you can beat me? Shit! And the problem is, I'm never sure when he's just gonna go overhead and shoot me, regardless of where I am. Oh, fuck. Ah! Oh, fuck, this is a terrible position. Fucking hell, I can't just... Yeah, I'm j all I'm trying to do now is just heal, but the problem is I he keeps cheap-shotting me by going overhead. And the other part of this boss fight that's infuriating is that it takes so much patience. I don't know whether this is uh, in the counts as a bad pun or a bad joke, but my my mom once told me in order to be a doctor you have to have a lot of patience. And I and then I asked her, wait, do you mean customers or? The other type of patients, and we lulled. Fuck, oh, he got me, damn it. Maybe this wouldn't be so bad, but there's only really one reliable bit of cover, and it's this little thing in the middle. Fuck! Oh, okay. Uh, this one, I cannot remember where you're safe and where you're not, so I might be screwed. Okay, good. I was right. I thought that, um... Uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, now I believe he starts more aggressively coming after you and shooting you more directly. Fuck! Oh, God damn it! I got a heal. I, I think he's gonna shoot shot me. Ah! Man, how is he going this fast around this area? Fucking damn it! Oh no! 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 He's moving around too much. I can't. Damn it! God. I wish I could like just talk about random shit right now instead of just moaning and screaming all the damn time. 
and ah, making an ass of myself. But it, you, this requires a lot of concentration. Ah, damn it! Fuck! No! Damn! It. So I gotta start all over again. This is why I usually try to reduce uh, or try to not use too many. Um, try not to use too many. Too many rations in the earlier uh, tower. But damn. The real trouble with this is trying to remember your positioning and the Heinz positioning because uh, from the Heinz position he could shoot you at any certain amount of locations but damn it he it's difficult to know where he's gonna go because he doesn't really show any signs unless you've absolutely memorized the pattern that liquid takes which I'm sure fuck I'm sure there are people who have done that oh damn it Oh sh damn it! Fuck! Oh man. Problem is, I'm really am in a position where. Th what? How did he hit me? Shit! I really am in a position where I can't really do anything but heal. I try to get myself in a position where I can heal. Oh my god, that dodge was the luckiest thing ever. And the thing is, he can go to the corners of, like, the tower much faster than you can move around. Which would- which is, in, in actuality, an absurd amount of control from any kind of helicopter. Now you can shoot at Liquid all you want right now, and it won't make a difference. He'll just tank it. Ah. Die. Fuck. Ah! You can dive all you want, but I'm absolutely sure at least one of his shots is gonna hit you. Okay, I'm, this is where I'm gonna use my health and try to avoid getting killed. Damn it! I really don't know any pattern besides just shoot when you can. Oh, God. Ah! Oh, damn it. Damn it, he moves too fucking fast! Shit! Ah! If you're wondering when I originally did this run for what was on my original channel, uh, I had a ton of practice. And if I'm not mistaken, I also had more health. And look at that, like five seconds into it, and I already took one shot in the leg. And motherfucker! Can I, and I know you can't go underneath this. This is the most reliable piece of cover, but you can't go underneath it. And it's difficult to know what the fuck won't kill you. Shit. Yeah. Snake. What happened? Snake. Snake. I'm gonna beat this though. I got I got myself set up here with all with the, such little amount of health and or whatever. I'm gonna fucking get myself out of this situation. No! Motherfucker! See what I mean by the sudden turns? 
he'll go one way and then he'll stop and go the other way. I have no idea whether or not that's actually possible on Heinz, but this is ridiculous. Fucking hell! Oh, wait. Oh, hold on. Where's the bandage? Oh. Oh, well, it stops the bleeding, but it doesn't actually fucking help. But it doesn't actually stop the damage itself. It just stops it from getting worse, but at the same time, it doesn't heal the little damage you have. Oh my god, I have no idea what is the pattern of trying to dodge bullets. Then again, I guess no one does shit. Oh, you can hit it. I would just thought that it wouldn't do anything, because I remember it not doing anything. Fuck! And this is the annoying pattern he gets in this after the missile shot. He'll start going up and down. Up and down. Fuck. Alright, I think I'm gonna have to ignore the bleeding because I really can't hit me. Oh my god, why didn't the radar come up? I mean, why, why didn't the, the squares? Holy crap, that was lucky dodging. I could be fine. Why didn't the fucking rocket lock on it? Oh my god, he's predicting where I'm going. How did I not get hit? I am stunning myself. I am lucky. Oh my god, I am getting ridiculously lucky, but will it hold, folks? Will it hold? Fuck. Shit. Wait, what the? Oh my god. Oh my god, I, I could win, I just have to, I just have to survive. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes! Holy shit! I just gotta get out of the way! And get, get to the right position! Oh, oh my god, yes! 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 Oh my god. Oh my god. Eat this! Oh shit, the hardest part of the entire game. And I'm rewarded with uh, Ryuhei Kitamura's sense uh, of physics being completely off. In case you're wondering, it actually is possible to hop off a rocket without sending it off. It's just that you wouldn't get that much air, and more than likely, you would probably just, uh, like, trip up. It's sort of like landing on ropes that break. It's possible to jump off, but you would have to predict how it would go, and it's pretty much impossible. Snake! See you in hell. Liquid. Now, I don't know what really uh, distinct makes rockets like set off, like whether it's set distance. I know how that's how it is on uh, rocket propelled grenades. 
but uh, I'm not sure if it's the same with that missiles. So it could just be that the instability caused it to crash into something behind him, but if, if it didn't crash into anything, I'm not really sure why it would explode behind him. Snake, the elevator's working. You fixed it? No, that's the weird thing. It just moved by itself. It's headed your way now. Is that so? Okay. That explosion before, what was it? Oh, I had to take out that helicopter. Helicopter? That's, That's incredible, incredible snake. snake! Listen, I just want to make sure again. This is the way to get to where Metal Gear is being stored. Yeah. The entrance to the underground maintenance base is towards the back of the snowfield ahead. Okay. Find a safe place to hide out for a while. Oh, I'm man. I'm going underground. I know, I know. You don't have to tell me. And stay out of my way. Don't try to be a hero or anything. Okay. Call me if you need to. Alright, I hope I, I didn't just destroy your ears earlier with uh, me screaming out like that. But shit, I was getting so frustrated. This boss fight, uh, the reason it's really, really hard... Uh, well, the, more, the reason it's as frustrating as it is is because it requires so much patience to do. Because it's ducking and hide, it's ducking and popping. You know, I, I don't know how, how people can play Gears of War for as long as they do. Uh, and, like, not get totally fucking annoyed at that shit. Uh, may maybe that's why I'm not into Gears of War as much as a lot of other people are, because I'm- I've already found, uh, gameplay types that are like it, and honestly, I I'm not even a fan of those. Um, but the thing is- uh, but this actually brings me to something else, like, is it a good thing that games have been trying to get like, uh, grittier and darker, because here's the thing, and, and yeah, I'm gonna be paraphrasing an extra credits episode a, a lot in this one. Their definitions of, like, of, like, gr of, uh, grit and dark is like, oh, uh, ev everyone has to be brooding, no one has to have an ultimate goal or whatever. But here's the thing, w what, to what end is that? Like, it's reasonable if it's to the, if it's to create, like, a story where, uh, you know, nothing is possible, like, to warn against what is potentially gonna go wrong in society soon enough. Uh, but why have it in stories where, where it really isn't necessary like that? You know, nihilism does not really make things more, <clears throat> does not make things more adult. It doesn't come off as more adult. It kind of makes things very boring, you know, like, and the reason I brought that up was because Gears, Gears of War is another one of those gray games that tries to have a ton of grit to it and try to seem more adult, but honestly, it kind of seems very childish in its style, you know, because nobody but a child or an adult who has n who is very, very boring would honestly believe a lot of the nihil nihilistic beliefs. And if you don't want to know what nihilism is, it's the belief that, oh, we live for nothing, we die to, uh, we, we only lo live just to die. Uh, there, there is no happiness in the world at all. You know, maybe I'm very harsh on that because I had kind of an asshole attitude like that when I was much younger. Um, hmm, interesting note. Hmm. But I, I'm not, I'm not happy with how that's become very pervasively big in a lot of media today. It's, it, it seems like everyone's trying to deceive themselves that into that that's more mature, that they're trying to be more mature than they are. And honestly, why Snake, try to be more mature? There's something I forgot mature? to tell you before. What? There were five stealth camouflage prototypes in my lab. Yeah, so? If you take out the one I'm wearing, that leaves four. Hey, this isn't first grade math class. I thought I'd get one for you, so I went back to the lab and... Yeah? The four suits were missing. Also, about the elevator that I checked out. It's really strange. It was like someone was intentionally holding it. When you were riding on it, did the weight limit warning go off? That's another thing that bothered me about it. The warning went off, and I know I couldn't be over the limit. How much do you weigh? About 135. But that elevator had a weight limit of 650 pounds. It would take at least five people to go over that limit. Look out, Snake! The guys who stole my stealth prototypes are in there with you. I, I like this setup, but I don't. I'm not a fan of like um, Otacon pointing out the obvious.
Whoa, this guy, a tough motherfucker. Oh my god, even this guy's tough. Shit, these guys have such a ridiculous range. Hmm. I believe I was talking about how, like, how, like, um, like, oh, dark and greediness has kind of pervaded everything. Honestly, and I believe I was talking about, like, why would you want to have that type of maturity? Why would you... Actually, no, it's not even that. It's why would you want to have a shitty life? Why would you want to have a shitty life? Why would you want to uh, make sure other people have a shitty life? I can understand, like, dropping people down if they're hurting other people inadvertently. But why would you want to, like, stop people from having fun? You know, I, I can understand, like, the, the guy stopping people who are acting selfish to the point where they're, uh, like, completely ruining other people's lives. But why would you want to ha- why would you just want to hurt people? Uh, in many ways, it could be just the idea that people like people to pay attention to them. They like the idea of feeling important. And even in that case, and in that mindset, it's like- it's like, yeah, there is something you want in life. To feel important. To feel much bigger than you ever could be. You know. Although that, then again, goes into the ideas of, you know, bullying. Uh, the, the absurd amount of asshole behavior in... In... In anonymous forms. In, well, in anything that's really anonymous. You know, people need to feel as though they are important because they lack that in their real lives or whatever. And I and I I, I understand a lot of the perspective of it because I was a complete I, I was one of those douchebags who would do that. But I'd like to say that I've grown up. I, I don't really think the word is properly grown up. Uh <laughs> Actually, yeah, it is grown up. Like, I, I hate, I even hate a lot of the ideas that uh, adults can't have fun in certain ways. I, I understand that there are certain things that people grow out of and, you know, kind of consistent with. But you know what? I, I kind of hate the idea that why should, why can't I, you know, someone who is as old as I am, enjoy playing video games? And not even video games like Metal Gear Solid, why can't I enjoy playing Mario or any real child game, you know, Rayman or whatever. And, and, and even in that sense, what's really stopping a child from, or what's stopping a younger person from really appreciating a game like this? You know, I can understand them not necessarily getting a lot of the messages because they haven't lived in, they haven't been pay, paying attention to politics or whatever. But you know, what's What's stopping a kid from kind of appreciating the narrative delivery? I'm not a fan of this narrative delivery Snake, in particular, but... are you okay? Otacon. What's stopping were them? Were there any other stealth prototypes? No. There were only five. So, this isn't stealth camouflage, then. What are you talking about? Someone's shooting at me in the middle of this blizzard. <gasps> it's her! Wolf. Sniper Wolf. Yes, it's her. It's definitely her. Otacon. You sound like you're happy. So no, happy. I'm not. So then what is it? Snake, please don't kill her. Are you insane? Please. She's a good person. You'd know that if you talked to her. That woman isn't as sweet as you think. I can see you perfectly from here. <laughs> I told you, I'd never quit the hunt. Now. Wolf! No, you can't! Don't get between a wolf and its prey. You're pretty good if you can hit me in this storm. You see? Women naturally make better soldiers. Wolf! Don't do this! Snake, I'm near. Can't you sense me near you? It's a mistake for a sniper to reveal her location. You think so? Well, a message from me is a message from Beth. If I'm close, you will know death is close. Please, Wolf! Snake! No! Quiet! Don't get in our way! Now I'll pay you back for Meryl. You men are so weak. You can never finish what you start. Hmm. I I'm wondering whether or not it would have been appropriate to say that's what she said! But obviously it's already a woman saying it to begin with, so it lacks weight. Alright, 
Okay, now I'm gonna point this out. I kn I know that you can do this, all right? Uh, I'm gonna show you this once, but because I'm gonna be using a... Wait, hold on. Am I safe here? Yeah, I am. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be pointing out that you can do this. You can actually use the Nikita missile against her. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it takes a lot of time, and that's what I don't like about it, that it takes forever to kill Wolf with this. But yes, you can actually kill Wolf with that. So yes, a, uh, another sniper battle. This one, th these really are never that tough, or at least I don't think they are. It, they're, I think this one's just kind of, uh... It comes down to find out where she is originally. Oh my god, the ammo is fucking me up. I need a place to hide. That ammo is gonna fuck me over, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because I can't pick... Actually, hold on. Okay, waste a bunch of ammo. I can pick up more. Alright. Now, Wolf, where are you? I don't see the girl. Where is she? I s Oh my goodness, I'm about to get shot. Crap. Oh well, I can probably- I can obviously take one or two shots and- Oh! Ah, damn it, as I said, the sniper controls are fucking crappy. And also, like most games, this game has a bit of a sniper delay where there's- a bit of a delay on what you can hit her with. Or, no, like, it, it, there's a bit of delay from when you fire to when the bullet actually hits. And if you don't know what, I, what I'm looking for a lot of times, a lot of times she'll be drawing her breath to the side. Fuck. Oh, wow, I actually got two shots in a row. Yeah, she's trying to surprise you with a lot of her tactics. So now she's going behind that tree. Either she's going to come out the other side or be able to shoot me from here. I don't think she's going to be able to shoot me on the left side. No. All right, got her. And now it's a, the exact same situation, except opposite it. If that makes any sense. And she's back to the other tree. Tree huggers. Am I right? What ah, the fuck? Stick to a tree, woman! Alright, after the next blood, I'm gonna have to reload. Okay, it does it automatically. Lovely. I can't remember which of the later games, or whether it's another series entirely, that uh, even when you run out of bullets, you don't automatically reload. Which is reasonable, because you could be in a firefight. And you might think it's a better idea to just switch to the weapon. Man, those must be the, some deadly pranks. <sighs> now, I like the idea that they are showing her, her battle damage. I just don't like that it doesn't take into account any of the type of uh, weapons you use. Yeah, this is another one of those absurd scenes. The idea that Snake, that Wolf wouldn't actually fire at first, like, might, it might be to a sign of respect, but I really don't know whether she would do that. Like, if she didn't fire immediately in that first sh scene, it makes sense that she wouldn't fire immediately in this one, because she wants the person to dread it. Now, that's, that's the one problem I do have again with this scene, is that they both fire, but Wolf probably would, would still hit regardless. So they should both be down.
thank God Ryuhei Kitamura has no understanding of physics or I'd be a dead man. Uh, let's see. Ah, yes, I have to point this out. I don't believe I, I pointed this out in anything besides my original walkthrough. At, no, I gotta be on the other side. All right. <clears throat> Parachute! Colonel, listen to me. I found a parachute near the wreckage of the Hind. A parachute? You don't think the liquid survived? No way. He'd be mad to try to escape by parachute. As soon as he jumped out of the pilot seat, he'd be cut to ribbons by the rotor blades. So what's that parachute doing there, then? I have no idea. A trap? Either that or a message. To me. Meaning, I'm not dead, I suppose? Maybe. But I think it's more like, I'll string you up. Well, in any case, don't let your guard down. I won't. There's always been such a strange phrase, I'll string you up, but it's not as weird as what he said in the original. Uh, well, actually, no, he, I believe he still said, uh, st said that in the original, but instead of saying he'll be sliced to ribbons by the, uh, by the, by the rotor blades, he said he'll be sliced faster than an onion on an infomercial, which I always thought was like, what? Alright, a lot of people, uh, have said this is, like, one of their most tragic scenes ever. I don't buy it. You know, I can understand someone, like, doing their backstory in, like, sad moments I, or whatever. I've waited for this moment. But honestly, I she never got like much, that. much simpy out of me. Waiting is my job. Never moving a muscle. Concentrating. <coughs> I am long shot. You cannot save me. Please, just finish me quick. I am a Kurd. I have always dreamed of a peaceful place like this. A Kurd? So that's why you're called Wolf. I was born on a battlefield. Raised on a battlefield. Gunfire, sirens, and screams. They were my lullabies. Hunted like dogs day after day. Driven from our ragged shelters. That was my life. Each morning I'd wake up and find a few more of my family or friends dead beside me. I'd stare at the morning sun and pray to make it through the day. The governments of the world turned a blind eye to our misery. But then, he appeared. My hero, Saladin. He took me away from all that. Saladin? You mean Big Boss? I became a sniper. Hidden. Watching everything through a rifle scope. Now I could see war not from the inside, but from the outside, as an observer. I watched the brutality. The stupidity of mankind through the scope of my rifle. I joined this group of revolutionaries to take my revenge on the world. But I have shamed myself and my people. I am no longer the wolf I was born to be. In the name of vengeance, I sold my body and my soul. Now, I am nothing more than a dog. Wolves are noble animals. They're not like dogs. In Yupik, the word for wolf is Keglanek, and the Aleuts revere them as honorable cousins. They call mercenaries like us dogs of war. It's true. We're all for sale for some price or another. But you're different. Untamed. Solitary. You're no dog. You're a wolf. Who 
Who are you? Are you Saladin? Wolf, you spared Meryl's life. Even when I'm just an onlooker, I don't like to see women or children get hurt. Rest easy. You'll die as the proud wolf you are. I finally understand. I wasn't waiting to kill people. I was waiting for someone to kill me. A man like you. You're a hero. Please, set me free. Again. Why? Why? I know a lot of people must have thought that Otacon was like... I loved you. I was like, this just coming in here was sad. But at the same time, as I said, I don't. I never believed Otacon or Sniper Wolf's what relationship. Is it? I thought Snake was oh right on the money when he said... Uh, Stockholm Syndrome. Or maybe he's a guy who just, like, uh, like, just thinks with his dick too much and, like, uh, will, will latch onto the first, uh, feminine piece of me. meat that he looks at. Ah! Hmm. I gotta understand his, like, leg not, uh, being that strong at this stage. But... Uh, th that overall just didn't add much. I, and by the way, why does it, when people trip, they trip all the way into a complete fall? Every yeah, fucking time. Okay, hero. Set me free. Goodbye. Point this out ahead of time, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing any of these words correctly. What many people believe to be the saddest and most sympathetic character in the Metal Gear Solid series is Sniper Wolf. Sniper Wolf was born around 1980, making her about 25 in this game. And she was from the south of Kurdistan. She was raised in the middle of guerrilla warfare between Kurdish freedom fighters and the Iraqi regime of Saddam Hussein. On a regular basis, she would have to find new shelter and lose friends and family left and right in the process. In 1988, the Al Anfal campaign had begun, which had resulted in nearly 200,000 killed civilians. During this time, she became witness to a group of Iraqi soldiers gassing her friends and family. She somehow survived through all that and was later trained by the Gurkhas, who taught her all her sniping techniques. She also eventually met with Big Boss, who brought her over to the United States. After Big Boss's death, Sniper Wolf was later recruited into Foxhound. Personality-wise, she's the archetypical anti-man, somewhat crazy, super assassin, but with a soft side that manifests itself in minor actions that are usually shown off-screen. Her backstory is a good sad tale based in real-life events, but I've always hated her TAKING REVENGE ON THE WORLD aspect. It seems like such a generic viewpoint, and I've never had much sympathy for her because her background and her personality felt so disconnected that it never quite registered for me that that background and this character were built together. It felt more like a sad story tacked onto an otherwise generic character. Her relationship with Otacon is also very passive. Basically, she likes dogs, he likes dogs, and that's what they know about each other. Her sexualization is always something that's strange to me too, but it's only in the first encounter though it's strikingly out of place for her character. I like that they try to add many dimensions to her character, but I don't like that they all feel so disconnected. Still, I guess her story got enough simpy out of people that they now believe she's come to have one of the saddest moments in gaming history. Even limited to just stuff on the PS1, certain moments in Chrono Cross and Silent Hill are honestly more impactful and memorable than Sniper Wolf's death. In Japanese, Sniper Wolf is voiced by Naoko Nakamura, and in English, her voice actress is Tasia Valenza, originally under the alias Julie Monroe. 
Naoko Nakamura is pretty good at carrying Wolf's emotions in this game, and she actually portrays her as someone who's a bit unstable, which is appropriate for her characterization. I also like how she gives Wolf a strong undertone of determination in her performance. It actually works well to make you believe that Wolf won't stop until she's killed Snake. Tasia Valenza's English performance as Sniper Wolf can best be described as incredibly chill. I assume this is her trying to sell the fact that Wolf is constantly having to take drugs, which makes sense, but at the same time it inhibits how much emotion she can really convey. So a lot of moments where she was supposed to be very booming and strong, she comes off as incredibly lax, and this is worsened in the remake where she actually sold this even more. The only thing I would really prefer over the English dub is, once again, the inclusion of the appropriate accent. So I'll give major credit to the Japanese voice actress as the better performer. Other performances done by Tasia Valenza include Poison Ivy in Batman Arkham City, Ultimicia in The City of Final Fantasy, and Spider-Woman in Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Naoko Nakamura seems to not have much of a voice acting career for some reason, as most of her roles are simple passive characters like nurses and random students, which is a shame because as I said, she's very good in this role. Sniper Wolf only appears in Metal Gear Solid and the remake, for obvious reasons. As I said, maybe a lot of people are attached more to the music that they played in the original game, which was the same Snake. music they played in every sad scene in this game. You said that love could bloom on a battlefield. <laughs> but I couldn't save her. If you're wondering why I've mostly kept quiet, it's because I know there's going to be what are you a couple doing? of people who hate on me if I, like, talk even for an instant. Returning in this it to its owner. I don't need a handkerchief. Cutscene. Why? I don't have any more tears to shed. <laughs> I'm going to the underground base. We're out of time. I know. You'll have to protect yourself now. Don't trust anyone. Yeah. If I can't stop Metal Gear, this whole place will be bombed to hell. Yeah. We might not meet again. Don't lose the codec. I'll be behind you all the way. You can leave any time. Get a head start. A head start on your new life. It's kind of funny considering where he goes next. Like, what's one of the first ways to get a head start? Oh, uh, in the next game, the focus is on uh, his past. Snake! You're going the wrong way. What was she fighting for? I'm not even kidding. He is actually going the wrong way. What am I fighting for? What are you fighting for? If we make it through this, I'll tell you. Okay. I'll be searching too. You ever see those moments when you're like, you just know they put it in just to be artsy? Ooh, I like that fade effect they just did where they kind of went white but then they went into black. That was actually cool. <clears throat> okay, I think that'll leave it off for now because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get an absolute buttload of hate mail for ch for talking <laughs> during that scene. Oh, it is lol worthy. And oh wait, no, 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 no. Hold on. Oh fuck. Um.
and the ultimate sign of disrespect. I'm going to wait. Oh, I can only grab her by her legs. That's strange. Mm, da, 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 da. Wow, that is a lot of blood in one circulated area. La, da, 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 da. And I get the the uh, what's it called? Tags. All right. And, no, not Meryl. I can't talk to her. And what? Oh yeah, I forgot. Up is automatically uh, calling. What's up, Snake? Actually, I'm gonna troll her a bit. Be careful. Hold on. I know you can do this. You call. Be careful. You call. Come on, Snake. Don't call me for no reason. Ah! Those creepy eyes. Now it's a concerned look. <laughs> All right, now I actually am going to save. Okay. In China, they say, the snake, knowing itself, strikes swiftly. It means that if you have confidence that what you're doing is part of your true nature, there should be no hesitation. I don't know whether your orders are in your true nature or not, but, snake, believe in yourself. You gotta believe! Catch you guys later!